Let's talk about how to calculate the interior angle measurements of polygons. In order for us to derive a formula that's going to help us to calculate the interior angle measurements of polygons, we're going to first need to explore what a diagonal is. A diagonal is a segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices in a polygon. Non-consecutive just means that they're non-adjacent, they're not right next to each other. So for example, if I wanted to draw all of the diagonals from vertex A, for example, I would start at A and go to C and D and E. Those are the three diagonals that I can draw from vertex A. A to B is not a diagonal because it's one of the sides of the polygon, and A to F is also not a diagonal because it's one of the sides of the polygon. So let's use this concept to help us identify the total degree measure of the interior angles of each type of polygon. My first question is, how many degrees are in a triangle? If I add up all three angles of a triangle, it always equals... 180 degrees. Hopefully you remember that from our previous units. So if I were to try to divide up this quadrilateral WXYZ into triangles by drawing a diagonal from a vertex, how many triangles could I divide it up into? Well, just two. If I choose to draw the diagonal from W to Y, it would look like that. So I have two different triangles. Or I could also do the other diagonal from Z to X, and again, I still just get two triangles. So if there's two triangles in a quadrilateral, and each triangle is worth 180 degrees, how many degrees are in a quadrilateral? Well, if there's two triangles worth and each triangle is 180, I can multiply two times 180 and find out that the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Let's try that again for a pentagon. So just pick one of the vertices and draw as many diagonals as you can to create as many triangles as you can. So if I go from P, I could connect it to S and to R. Those are the two diagonals that can be drawn from point P in this pentagon. So how many triangles were created? There's three of them. One, two, three. And you would get the same answer whether you drew your diagonals from Q or R or S or T. So if there's three triangles in a pentagon, how many total degrees are in the pentagon? Well, I'd multiply three times 180 because each triangle is worth 180 degrees. So the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon must be 540 degrees. What about a hexagon? From G to K, G to J, and G to I, I end up with a total of four triangles that have been created by these diagonals. So 4 times 180 gives me my total of 720 degrees. Okay, well let's kick it up a notch. Let's go all the way up to a decagon. So from A to I, H, G, F, E, D, and C. Gosh, that's a lot of triangles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different triangles are created when you draw the diagonals from one of the vertices in this decagon. So 8 times 180 gives me my answer of 1,440 degrees. That's the total of the angles of a decagon. So let's see if we can make a formula out of this. This is all the information that we just gathered. So if I give you any shape, any polygon, can you tell me what the sum of its interior angle measurements is going to be based on the number of sides it has? What do I do? Well, for each of these, it looks like the number of sides in relationship to the number of triangles that you can create is a difference of two, right? There's six sides, four triangles, ten sides, eight triangles, four sides, two triangles. That's a difference of two each time. So if I just take my number of sides and subtract two, that tells me how many triangles there are. And I know the triangles are worth 180, so I just multiply the number of triangles by 180 to get to my answer. And that's all the formula is. You just take n, which is the number of sides that the polygon has, and subtract two from it, and multiply it by 180. So if I wanted you to figure out the sum of the interior angle measurements of this polygon, the first thing you need to identify is how many sides does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. So since it has seven sides, I can say that n minus two times 180, well, n for that would be seven. So seven minus two times 180, or five times 180. So the sum of the interior angle measurements of a heptagon is 900 degrees. What about this big boy? 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 sides. So I'll do 12 minus 2, that's 10, multiply it times 180, and this 12 agon, if you don't know the name of something, you can just say 12 and then agon, and it's a great name for a polygon. So this 12 agon has 1,800 degrees of interior angle measures. Wow. Well, let's take it the other direction. What if I knew the sum of the interior angles? Could you figure out how many sides that shape has? Well, yeah, we're just going to use that same formula, the sum of the angles equals n minus 2 times 180. So instead of plugging in the number for little n, we're going to plug it in for the sum of the angle measures. So 1080 equals n minus 2 times 180. So divide both sides by 180, and then add 2 to both sides. So it turns out that this shape must be an octagon. If the sum of the interior angles is 1080, then it must have 8 sides. And let's try it again. So I'll use that same formula, sum of the angles equals n minus 2 times 180. In other words, 2340 equals n minus 2 times 180. Divide both sides by 180, and add 2. So this must be a 15-sided figure. So far we've only been talking about the sum of all of the angles, but what if I want to talk about one angle at a time? Well, you can really only do that if it's regular. If it's regular, that means that all of its angles and all of its sides are the same. So if you know that it's a regular polygon, then you can use this formula to calculate each of the individual angle measurements in that shape. So for example, if I knew that each of the angle measurements in this regular polygon were 156 degrees each, and I wanted to know how many sides does it have, I would say that the number of sides is equal to 360 over 180 minus 156. And that would give you an answer of 15 sides. So if it is a regular 15-sided figure, then each of the interior angle measurements is equal to 156 degrees. What if it was 170 degrees each? Sides equals 360 over 180 minus 170. So that's a really big shape. It's a 36-sided figure. Next, let's talk specifically about quadrilaterals, because that's going to be our focus for the rest of this entire unit, is talking about quadrilaterals in particular. So instead of just using the polygon interior angles theorem every time, which is this formula that we derived earlier in the lesson that you can just take the number of sides and subtract 2 and multiply it times 180, well, if it's a four-sided figure, then it's 4 minus 2 every time, so 2 times 180. So that's what this corollary is for. If you're specifically talking about a quadrilateral, then you can just say that the sum of the interior angle measurements has to be 360 degrees, because 4 minus 2 times 180 is 360. So we can use that information to help us calculate missing angle measurements in quadrilaterals. Since I know that this is a four-sided figure, I know that the sum of the interior angle measurements must be 360 degrees. So I could write an equation that looks like this. The measure of angle A plus 124 plus 81 plus 73 equals 360. And when you solve that, you find out that the measure of angle A must be 82 degrees. We can use that same idea for more complicated problems like this one. Just add all four of those angle measurements together and set it equal to 360. Combine like terms, subtract 151, divide by 19, so x must be equal to 11. So in order to figure out the missing angle measurements, we'll just take 11 and plug it in. So 8 times 11 minus 1, that's 88 minus 1, so 87. And then f we already knew was 70. 11 times 11 is 121 for the measure of angle g. And h we already knew was 82. Same idea on this next one, just a little bit easier, because it's just 2x plus 2x plus 4x plus 4x, so 12x equals 360, so x equals 30 which means that angle I and angle J are both 60 degrees, and angle L and angle K are both 120 degrees. We'll actually learn later in this unit that that makes that an isosceles trapezoid. Don't forget that right angles are still a thing. Right angles measure 90 degrees, so if you're going to write an equation for this guy, then it would be 90 plus 90 plus 15x plus 4 plus 7x equals 360. Solve that, and we find out that x equals 8, which means, well, Angle M we already knew was 90. Angle N must be 7 times 8, which is 56. Angle O is 15 times 8 plus 4, that's 124. And we already knew that angle P was 90. And that's all you need to know about calculating the interior angle measurements of a polygon. In our next video, we'll discuss how to calculate the exterior angle measurements of polygons.